Hello and welcome to Broken Entertainment. Uh, so I was going to save this video for tomorrow and I, that was after I decided to actually do it. This is one I've been sitting on for a while and almost didn't do a couple of times and I realized the reason for that was fear. Which is why I'm doing it. Because I am afraid if I do this video... At some point, if I'm trying to get a, a, one of my books traditionally published, an agent's going to comb through my social media because I know they do. And they're going to see this video and they're going to go, oh, nope. And that's the problem. That's the problem with blacklists. And that's, that's make no mistake, that's what this is. It's a blacklist. It's done in a way that doesn't immediately make it illegal, but blacklists are illegal for good reason. And that fear made me realize the importance of indie publishing more than ever. Because we're being told that publishing is an open industry. We're being told that, you know, all you have to do, get an agent, the agent will get you a contract, etc., etc. And there are a lot of good agents out there. But, there's been a shift over the last at least four years, maybe more, where agents have started talking more and and publishers have started talking more about politics and identity than publishing as one of the things that drove me off of twitter where i said you know I, enough is enough because everybody i was following in publishing stopped talking about publishing and all they talked about was politics identity politics, and so on. And when the people in charge of letting us in are driven by identity politics, or politics in general, it doesn't have to be identity politics, any politics, left, right, center, it doesn't matter. When they're driven by politics so much that that's all they talk about, then remember those people are in charge of the gates that let you in. And they can close those gates. And we've seen it happen. We've seen it happen for different reasons. There was a woman, I forget her name, who published a book and she retracted it. And this was a fantasy novel, and it involved slavery. It, this is an Asian woman, the kind of, of author that a lot of agents are pushing for, writing in an Asian setting, the kind of setting a lot of, of agents and publishers are pushing for. But because she had slavery in it, it was deemed racist. Even though that slavery wasn't even the same kind of slavery you think of when somebody says the word slavery. It was slavery in a fantasy realm. Had nothing to do with Africans. And they, they reacted strongly against her to the point that she retracted her own book. So these people, driven by politics, and again, there are a lot of good agents, but more and more, if Twitter is any indication, and it is, because a huge chunk of the publishing industry is on Twitter, and it's where they do a lot of their business, when you submit to 
either an agent or a publisher, either one, they ask for your social media information. They don't need your social media information to do their job, but they ask for your social media information. And that allows them to go through your social media and see if you're the kind of person they want. And that's bad enough. And I've had a fear with that as well, is I'm outspoken on media having identity politics and lecturing and agenda in it. And that can make some of those people say no. Fortunately, we have the ability to self-publish. But then you have this. This is an open letter. This is publicly acknowledged. It has been covered in the LA Times. An open letter signed by powerful people within the industry. Proclaiming people who worked for Trump will never get published. And you might be thinking, or it's possible to think, hey, I don't like Trump. I don't like his policies. I don't like the people that worked for him. Maybe they shouldn't get a book. Especially if you are in the belief that they committed crimes. But, and you might also be thinking, and you can think, and this will be the defense. Oh, it's okay because it's just those people. But it's always just those people, isn't it? It's always just, all, it's okay it's just the commies. Remember McCarthy? The blacklists in Hollywood, the people who weren't allowed to work because they had certain political affiliations or were believed to have certain political affiliations. Oh, oh it's okay, it's just the communists. No, it's not okay, it's never okay. A blacklist is never Okay, I don't care who's on it. Because it never stays with its target. It always expands. And it always prevents the sharing of ideas and beliefs and knowledge. And yes, that includes people in jail. People in jail can and should be allowed to write books and sell them. And yes, you might look at the people in jail, some of them, and go, wow, why is a murderer allowed to write a book about their crime and make money? Well, why aren't they? Because yes, that person did something terrible, and they're writing a book that may be terrible. But everybody has the right to share their opinion, to share their beliefs, to share their ideology. Now, if that book is calling for people to go out and commit murder, that's different. That's a crime, it's already covered. But at the same time, what if that book is about how they did this thing and regretted it? And you're not going to let it be published because you don't like the person and their crime. And people can point and say, well, there are Son of Sam laws because the, the serial killer known as Son of Sam did this. Well, the Son of Sam laws were, were, were ruled unconstitutional, a ruling that is ignored frequently but they are unconstitutional because the freedom of speech does not say as long as you don't do something bad 
And now we have people who justify what they're doing by saying, oh, these are criminals. Keep in mind, none of these people have been put on trial. None of these people are sitting in jail. But they've been determined criminals by people who don't like their politics. And they cite the Son of Sam laws, saying this is why they exist so that criminals can't profit. But these are not criminals. These are people they simply disagree with. And it's important, whether you like Trump or not, and I'm not being political in this case, I'm not saying who I agree with or don't. But let's change the words. Let's replace Trump with Biden. Or Obama. It's still wrong. Because it's still saying these people are criminals because I don't like them. These people, I have determined to be criminals because they were in an administration I didn't agree with. None of these people can be held as criminals or prevented from publishing by Son of Sam laws, which again are unconstitutional. None of these people can, can be held accountable to those laws because they have not been charged they have not been put on trial, and they have not been found guilty. But the publishing industry, in increasingly large numbers, is saying, these are guilty people, they're all criminals, they're not allowed to make any money. Think about that. Think about, if you're on the, let's say you're on the left, or if you're on the left, and you're thinking, well, I don't like Trump. Okay, that's fine. But what if we change those words? What if we changed, we affirm that participation in the administration of Donald Trump to the administration of Barack Obama? How does that sound? Sounds pretty shitty to me. And that fear of, I don't want to do this video because I might have a harder time getting published. That's why I'm doing it, because that's why these are so wrong. Because you have people who are going to say, ooh, I might not be able to get published because of who I voted for. And make no mistake, people will think that. Whether or not this letter says anything about those votes. Let's get into the letter and then I'll get into some other stuff. This is a letter of intent from publishing professionals of the United States. We all love book publishing, but we have to be honest, our country is where it is in part because publishing has chased the money and notoriety of some pretty sketchy people. It has granted those same people both the Im imprimatur of respectability and a lot of money through sweetheart book deals. Okay. As members of the writing and publishing community of the United States, we affirm that participation in the administration of Donald Trump must be considered a uniquely mitigating criterion for publishing houses when considering book deals. Okay? Take a minute and think about that. Consequently, we believe no participant in an administration, and here's where they lay out Crimes that have not been brought to court, that have not been charged, that have not been found guilty. That caged children, performed involuntary surgeries on captive women, and scoffed at science as millions were infected with a deadly virus should be enriched by the almost rote largies of a book deal. 
and no one who incited and this is where it expands it's already one paragraph in expanding two paragraphs and no one who incited suborned instigated or otherwise supported the January 6, 2021 coup attempt should have their philosophies remunerated and disseminated through our beloved publishing houses. Now, I do not support what happened on January 6. But, how do you determine any of this information? you can say, well, the FBI is arresting people. Okay, fine. Those people will be charged, found guilty or innocent based on the evidence, and put in jail. That's their punishment. Their punishment is not the loss of the ability to speak. And... These are assumptions of guilt. You're assuming guilt based on the participation in administration. Now, people might be tempted to think, well, that's for the big people. No. It says everybody. What if, what if you are an intern in the White House? In college? Now you're not allowed to publish a book because you are an intern doing work because it would help you get your degree and perhaps a position in government and start your career. You're no longer allowed to publish a book because you are an intern. Son of Sam laws exist to prevent criminals from benefiting financially from writing about their crimes. There are two issues with this. One, as I've said, they're unconstitutional. Two, they have to have committed a crime. I'm sorry, there are three issues with this. Two, they have to have committed a crime, been found guilty in a court of law, and sentenced. Three, you're assuming they're going to write about their crimes, but they don't have to, because that's not what they're saying. They're not saying if they write about their time in the administration. They're saying, at all. So now, let's say you're that intern, and you have a science fiction book, and you want to get it published. Oh, sorry. Sorry. You are an intern in an administration we didn't agree with. Think about this. Really think about it. And, and if you are politically inclined, take the blinders off for a second. Forget the name Donald Trump. And just think about it. And don't think about it like the Secretary of State, think about the intern, because that person counts under this letter. That 20-something-year-old who wasn't politically motivated, who was just doing a job because it was part of their program. And they probably weren't paid. Now they can't write a science fiction novel because of that. That is unacceptable. This whole thing is completely unacceptable. And it, it highlights the problem with the, publish, the traditional publishing industry right now. You have a huge amount of people who are politically motivated... Deciding who gets to be published and who does not.
We are writers, editors, journalists, agents, and professionals in multiple forms of publishing. We believe in the power of words. We are tired of the industry we love enriching the monsters among us. And we will do whatever is in our power to stop it. Now, before anybody says, oh, this doesn't mean anything. It's just someone speaking out. Well, let's look at the people who have signed. We're not going to go over every name. But I want to highlight some of the associations. Co-owner, Belmont Books. Executive Editor, Candlewick Press. Audiobook Narrator, Macmillan. Brilliance Publishing. Audiobook Narrator. Literary and Operations Associate. Folio Literary Management. President, Anderson Literary Management, LLC. Media Assistant Editor, Norton and Company. ERB Publishing. President, Emmy, I don't have... Oh, this is their own company, okay. Public Relations. Production editor. Senior cartographer, Hatchet Book, Book Group. Editorial assistant. Associate professor of book publishing, Portland State University. Penguin Random House. Editorial assistant. Development editor. Editor, Cambridge University Press. Marketing Coordinator, Oxford University Press. Audiobook Narrator. Assistant Editor, Harlequin. Editorial Assistant, Hatchet Book Group. Associate Literary Agent. Associate Registrar, Special Projects. Editorial Assistant, Flat Flatirian Books. Agent Upstart Crow Literary. Digital Sales Associate Simon & Schuster. Editorial Assistant Macmillan. The Jennifer D. Chiara Literary Agency. Bookseller. Oddity Prodigy Productions. Rosefield Publishing. CEO of TCK Publishing. Penguin Random House Assistant Editor. Associate Editor, St. Martin's Publishing. Editorial Assistant, St. Martin's Press. CEO, Jesse Valinsky VO. Baker and Taylor. So now you, here's, here's someone from the people who distribute your books. Associate National Account Manager, Harper Collins. Agent, the Night Agency. Journalist, writer, member of ASJA. Editor, Hatchet Book Group. Audiobook narrator. Harper Teen. Editor, Macmillan. Audiobook narrator. Content writer. VP Content League Podcast. Editor. Former Senior Reviews Editor, Publishers Weekly. Author Harlequin. Rebecca Friedman Literary. This is the owner. Rights Manager Scholastic Incorporated. Content Developer and Editor Freelance. Head Writer. Diamond Comic Distributors. Sales Manager Macmillan. Associate Literary Agent. Editor-in-Chief, The Cavern Press. Editorial Assistant, Macmillan. How many times have you heard Macmillan now? Co-publisher, Not a Pipe Publishing. Senior Editor, Avalon Travel, an imprint of Hatchet Book Group. Publisher, Small Beer Press. Insane Angel Studios. Associate Editor, Macmillan. Assistant Editor, Harper Collins. 
Central Avenue Publishing. Marketing Manager, Tor. Scholastic. Tor, Editor-in-Chief and Vice President. Agent with Reeves Literary Agency. Editor, Assistant Editor Harper Collins, again. Children's Department Assistant McIntosh and Otis Literary Agency. Executive Editor Penguin Random House. Scholastic. Flatarian Books. Bantam Sam Hain Micro and Indie Presses. Never heard of Glittership Magazine. Night Agency. St. Martin's Press Senior Editor. Art Director, HMH Books and Media. Former President and Publisher, DC Comics. The list just keeps going. Let's see. We'll scroll through here a little bit longer. See if some big names stick out. Not that we haven't already covered some big names. Copy editor, Simon Schuster. Thorn Rose Publishing. Publishing Operations Assistant. Librarian in charge of purchasing. Look at this list. Look at this list. Penguin Random House. Again. Simon Schuster. Again. Penguin Random House. Again. Stormbird Press. Simon & Schuster. Again. Look at this list. Look at this list and tell me it doesn't matter. Look at the names of the companies on this list and tell me it's not important. This list will not stay this narrow. It will expand. We have officials in Washington, D.C. who have called for the blacklisting of people who voted for Trump. You have this designed to keep people out of publishing books who participated in government administration. And then you have, there is no defense for this. You cannot say this list will stay narrow because it won't. It will expand because these people will say, oh, you defended that person. You're not on the, you're on the list now. They'll say, oh, you are associated with that person. You have a friends group with that person. How long before they decide that if you voted for Trump, you count? Because this has happened before in the United States. It happened under McCarthy in the 50s with communists. And it wasn't okay then either. And it kept Tons of people, from the high ranking to the low, from working in Hollywood, because of their political affiliation, and then that expanded to potential political affiliation. Look at this. This is, I realize it's Wikipedia, but it's an easier presentation. to go through. Okay. You're the House Committee on Un-American Activities. Here's the blacklist. This came from major studios. Tell me how familiar this sounds. 
will not knowingly employ a communist or a member of any party or group which advocates the overthrow of the United States. How familiar does that sound? Let's go, let's go back. Hang on. Let's go back. No participant in administration that case children performed involuntary surgeries on captive women and scoffed at science as millions were infected with deadly virus should be enriched. And no one who incited, suborned, instigated, or otherwise supported the January 6th coup attempt. One of the other things you could do under the McCarthy era, you could hire groups of people who would go through somebody's affiliations and make sure they were in no way connected to anyone who could potentially, in theory, be connected to a communist somewhere. It is wrong on both sides. It is wrong on every conceivable level And here it is, black and white. Covered in the LA Times. We can't stand for this kind of thing. And if you are an agent in traditional publishing, if you are an editor in traditional publishing, or you otherwise work in traditional publishing, and you don't stand for this, you need to tell people. And I know you'll be afraid because you'll think, well, that's going to get me on a list. Well, it might. But people need to know there are places they can go. Ultimately, of course, people can go to self-publishing. Thank God. Publishing should be based on quality of the work and the ability to sell it. And that's it. should have nothing to do with political affiliations. It should have nothing to do with perceived political affiliations. It shouldn't matter if you're white or if you're black or any other color. It shouldn't matter if you're male, female, or anything else. It should matter on the quality of the work and if they can sell it. But that's not where we are. And we have the proof. This sucks. So, again, I don't support what happened on January 6th. I'm not being political, I'm not taking a side. It is wrong every time. It is wrong any time. It is wrong on either side. It doesn't matter. Anytime you change publishing from how good is this and how will it sell to oh, but did you say the right things? What's your social media look like? Oh, who did you vote for? What administration did you work in? In turn, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing and don't forget to ring the bell for notifications and I will see you next time.